Welcome to STA 2023 Elementary Statistics. For this first part of the orientation, we'll be going over the syllabus. To get to the syllabus, click on the Click Here First orientation, which you must have already done to get here. And you'll see something that looks like this. Um, it'll be a little different on your screen, but it'll be pretty close to this. Um, click on where it says the syllabus, right above, um, well, right below the orientation part one syllabus. This will open up in a new window the syllabus for this class. The items that are highlighted are things that change from semester to semester, so those dates will be different depending on which semester you are taking this class. All right, um, so welcome to the class, as I said. Um, my name is Wendy Pagoda, um, and I'll be your instructor for this class. Um, my office, assuming it hasn't moved um, after this video was recorded, is an STPRD. Um, this is on the South Shore campus. It's closest to the what's now the construction site, or hopefully will be the new building <laughs> in future semesters. Um, here are my office hours, but again, make sure you check every semester that my office hours will change, so make sure you check the office hours for your particular semester on the syllabus. Um, you can also reach me um, um, online, um, just by email is the best way to reach me. Um, I answer my emails very, very quickly. I also usually have online office hours um, most semesters, and those are times where I'm guaranteed to be online, um, so I'll answer your emails within a few minutes. Um, usually I have additional hours as well that you can make by appointments. Um, my office phone, honestly, is not the best way to get a hold of me. I only really check my voicemails when I'm in my office. So if you want to get a hold of me, email is by far the best way. I pretty much live at my computer. So um, if I'm not actively teaching a class or doing something else, I will get your email. All right, um, so about the course, course description. Statistics is a math class, but it's unlike most other math classes you would have had. Um, statistics is all about using information in the world around you to actually like answer questions. So yes, there is a little bit of math in this class, but it's really about applying math to real world situations and real world, real world data. Um, there's not going to be a single time in this class where you say, oh, we'll never use this in the real world. You'll always know an application for what, what I teach you in this course. So that's, I think, pretty cool. Um, the objectives for this class, um, you can read through those. I know most of those really aren't going to make some sense to you. Some of the stuff you might know already, like mean, median, and mode. But uh, for the most part, um, you'll understand these concepts by the end of the course. All right, the textbook for the class is um, a first course in statistics, 11th edition, by McClave and Sinchek. Um, there's no physical textbook requirement for this class, but an e-text is included with the access code to what's called my stat lab. Uh, this is similar to my math lab or my econ lab if you use that. Um, a little bit more on that is included in uh, one of the other orientation videos on actually using my stat lab. But again, you do not need a physical textbook for the class. You just get the e-text included with my stat lab. All right, um, a scientific calculator um, is required for this class. A TI 83 or 84 is highly recommended. It's the video, it's the, um, it's the uh, calculator I use in some of the videos, and it's just the calculator I'm very comfortable with. But any scientific calculator will work, uh, one that can at least do square roots. As far as how the grading structure works in this class, there's going to be a few components of your grade. There's going to be two exams that are required to be proctored. In other words, you have to physically go to a location to take the exams. Um, and this is an HCC uh, requirement uh, for all math classes. So it wasn't really my decision, but I do agree with the decision because it preserves academic integrity. So 60% uh, of your grade is going to be determined by those two exams, 30% each. Um, there'll be a midterm and a final. You'll have approximately one week to take these exams. So you have um, a choice between your testing centers and a choice on the dates. Just make sure you take it during those times. And again, anything highlighted in yellow in the syllabus uh, walkthrough will change from semester to semester, so make sure you look at your actual syllabus. Um, participation, um, there'll be a few opportunities uh, to get uh, some extra credit points. Um, there's going to be an orientation quiz that's worth about one extra credit point that you uh, need to take um, by the end of the first week. 
And again, that date will change from semester to semester. Um, there's also going to be some discussion boards. These are not um, these are not graded, but it's your chance to interact with your classmates. Uh, homework is um, 100 points of your grade, so 20% of your final course grade. Um, this is required to be completed in my stat lab. Again, this is similar to my math lab or my econ lab or my whatever lab. Um, uh, I'm not expect this homework is kind of difficult. I'm not expecting you to get 100% on each exercise. They couldn't very easily get 100% because you're allowed to keep redoing it until you get it right. But uh, just do your best, and as long as you get um, about at least an 80% on each section, you will get credit for that homework assignment. And I am a little bit lenient on that. I'm just looking for you to actually put forth effort and to do each of the required assignments. Um, there will be also four small projects, um, mini projects is what I like to call them. Um, there are 25 points each for a total of 100 points total. This is your opportunity to actually demonstrate that you can actually do some useful um, statistics, actually take what you learn in the class and apply it to some real world situation and produce a small report. I'm not talking about like, you know, 500 word essay. I'm talking about maybe a few sentences, but just uh, demonstrate that you can actually use the tools in the class to produce something that your boss, your future boss might be interested in. Um, and you'll have an opportunity to keep resubmitting these until you get full credit. So this is really your chance to bring up your grade. All right. And those are due actually at the end of the semester. But again, you will want to do them as soon as possible so you can resubmit them if points were taken off. Okay, as far as grading goes, you just add up all your points in the class and any extra credit you might have received, and there's, your grade is out of 500 points, and then you have the typical dating, um, dating <laughs> grading scale of 90% uh, and above is an A, 80 to 89, B, etc. As far as makeup policies, um, uh, I would prefer not to give any makeup exams, so do not count on getting a makeup exam. You have almost a whole week to take your exam, so plan accordingly. Um, any missed exam that is not made up will receive a grade of zero. This does not apply if, for example, you know that you have a wedding coming up during the week that you're supposed to uh, take your exam, so you know in advance that you're going to miss that week. You're not going to be able to take a proctored exam that week. Just talk to me in advance, and I mean like now, and <laughs> talk to me at the beginning of the semester, uh, send me an email, explain the situation, and um, you'll be able to take the exam like a few days early, and that won't be an issue. Just uh, again, work that those details out with me at the beginning of the semester. All right, as far as college policies, uh, this is the same really on any syllabus at the South Shore campus. Uh, long story short, just don't cheat. Um, I'll catch you. I actually catch people every semester, and you wind up getting either failing the class or at least getting a zero on the assignment um, and get reported for academic dishonesty. So it's, it's just not worth it. Don't do it. Um, there's no reason to do that. All right, um, important dates. Again, this changes from semester to semester. Just uh, keep these in mind. Um, the important one is really... Uh, these last two here, um, uh, again, this changes from semester to semester, but keep in mind of the add drop um, times for the class. This is your, um, if you don't withdraw by uh, whatever date is listed here on your syllabus, then um, you, won't, you won't get reimbursed if you withdraw after that date. And the last date of withdraw um, with a grade of W, and again, this means you do not get your money back, and it does count as a, uh, an attempt at the class. Um, and so that might affect your financial aid and other situations. Um, but this is the last date to withdraw with a grade of W. So do keep those dates in mind. All right, um, moving on, um, the HEC um, Educational Equity and Student Disability Policy. Um, I take this very, very seriously. If you need any kind of accommodations, please let me know. Um, the proper channels to go through is to call, is to call your um, disability or accommodation uh, services office at the South Shore campus. Um, as of this semester, Rich Cervetti is in charge of that. Um, as of the spring 2015 semester, he is a wonderful person, but all the disability coordinators are wonderful people. I've talked with all of them before. Um, and they will make sure you get the accommodations you are legally entitled to receive. So just make sure you do, you take care of that. All right. Um, the realities of taking an online class, this is really the important part. Um, 
a huge percentage of students decide to take an online class because they think it might be easy. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be just as difficult as a regular class with the added, uh, I don't want to say bonus, but the added thing of uh, you really have to have some self-discipline. There's not going to be an instructor looking over your shoulder, making sure you turn in assignments on time. You have to have the self-discipline to know that you're going to need to spend one to two hours a day, maybe four to five times a week, um, going through the videos, doing the homework, practicing. You really have to have the motivation to stay on track. Um, the dates, most of the dates in this class are flexible other than the test dates. And I allow that because I realize that you're busy people <laughs> and you, you have responsibilities, but you want to make sure that you're pacing yourself okay so that you're not rushing to get everything done at the end of the semester and that you're able to have enough time to study for the midterm and study for the final. So um, make sure you do plan that. Um, so uh, again, make sure you pay attention to when like each week um, of the course begins and ends. Um, again, this might change from semester to semester, just depending on how the semester lines up. Um, but try to plan where you do complete each week's of lessons within that week time frame so you don't fall behind. Maybe even get a little ahead. All right, the technical requirements for the course. Um, most of you probably have this already, but just make sure that you have like a Windows or Mac computer um, ability to watch YouTube videos. So in other words, you know, a typical um, web browser, uh, a flash player. Um, you need to have an Adobe Acrobat reader, which if you're able to view the syllabus, you do. Um, speakers or some other sound capability. Um, most of the videos are closed captioned. Um, I am working on updating the closed caption so they don't have that nonsense speak, but we'll see. Um, you also need Microsoft Office, or at least I highly recommend it. Um, as of this semester, uh, students are actually able to download Microsoft Office for free, which is pretty cool. And this is not available to faculty, but it is available to students. Um, and you can just click that link and it'll bring you right there. Um, if the link isn't working, you just go to HawkNet um, on the HCC homepage, and uh, there's a link at the very bottom to get this uh, free Microsoft Office. Um, and one more thing, um, even though I'm pretty decent with computers, I'm not a technology expert, so while I can try to help you out with some issues with my stat lab or some Blackboard issues, if you really need help um, and you're just having problems getting the technical stuff working, um, we do have something called HCC Live, and there's actually a link inside the course right here um, for HCC Live help. So click that and they will uh, help you out with the Blackboard issues or any kind of technical requirements that you might have. Um, inside my Stat Lab, there is also a support tab as well. All right, uh, taking exams. Again, you're required to take the exam at um, a, an approved proctor location. Any of the HCC testing centers is fine. Um, other testing centers will work as well if you're out of state or out of the area or even out of the country, but you need to get that approved by me first. Each of these uh, testing centers have their own days and time schedules and requirements. Some of them require appointments. Some of them don't allow appointments. It's a Make sure you look at your testing center ahead of time to plan out when you're going to take your test and any rules and any um, regulations that are required, such as like, are you required to bring your ID, etc. Um, and make sure you also get to the testing center with enough time to take the test. The test will be approximately two hours, the midterm and the final. So if the testing center closes at 6 p.m., don't arrive at 5 p.m. You won't have enough time to take your test. And again, please do not wait to the last minute. Um, at the end of the orientation, there's an orientation quiz. I'll show you that really quick. Um, right at the bottom here. I don't know if you can see that. But... Um, um, at the end of the orientation, there's that orientation quiz. If you take the quiz, the very last question asks you to fill in which testing center you plan to go to. Um, and this is going to determine where I actually send the test. So uh, make sure that you actually do the orientation quiz and let me know within the first week when you plan to take the test. All right, as I mentioned earlier, I respond to emails fairly quickly. Um, I respond to most emails, I say within 12 hours, but truth be told, it's usually much, much sooner than that. It's often within a few hours. If you don't receive a response back within 24 hours, that means your mail wound up in junk mail or just got lost among the <laughs> pool of mail I get each day. So just resend um, the email, possibly use a different email account. Um, very often things from like Hotmail servers or Yahoo mail servers uh, get sent to junk mail. So try to send it from your HCC email. 
um, if, it, if I didn't get the first message. All right, um, a typical week in the class, um, as far as what you're expected to do, just go into Blackboard, um, read any announcements um, that might have been posted. I don't plan on making announcements every week, but there might be something um, that I want to point out or a confusing concept. Um, then you're going to go to what's due this week and select the icon for that week um, and just complete that week's lessons. Again, you're welcome to work ahead. Um, any questions that you may have, of course, you can ask me, but if you have questions from your classmates or just thoughts you want to share with your class, um, there's also a discussion board for each week, so you can talk about certain concepts from that chapter or sections. Um, and then for the midterm and final exam weeks, just make sure you work through the review packets. Um, the answers, basically, it's a practice test. At the end of the practice test, there are answers, so you can go through that um, to help prepare you for the test a little bit a little further than just the homework and the uh, videos would. Um, and then, of course, make sure you plan out with your testing center when you plan to take the um, exam and make sure you show up at that time. And then again, any, anything in yellow changes from semester to semester. Um, so just make sure that you um, follow this uh, schedule. All right, and um, that concludes this uh, orientation on the syllabus. Um, again, if you have any questions, please, please contact me. Um, I'm, I know this is an online class, and it can feel like we're not actually involved. The faculty is not involved, but we are. This class is my baby. <laughs> this class I've put so much effort into. Um, so please let me know if you have any suggestions, any comments, any um, confusing uh, parts that you want clarified. Um, I am here for you. Um, just let me know if you need anything. All right. Um, and thank you.